welcome back to our new video in this one uh, we will see the fiber reinforced composites in the previous lectures we have seen the part particle reinforced composites and here we are moving to the second classification that is fiber reinforced composites okay so the um, these are one of the most commonly used and widely available composites okay this is the fiber reinforced composites here the dispersed phase is in the form of a fiber and you all know what do you, what do you mean by fiber okay the length to diameter ratio is very high very large in comparison to the particle okay the fiber reinforced composites are composed of axial particulates it's known as fibers are also known as axial particulates embedded in a a common usual matrix material okay so the major aim or the objective of the composite is to increase a particular material's specific strength or to obtain a material with high specific strength and high specific modulus okay specific strength means the ratio it is the ratio of or we can say it is the strength per unit density similarly specific modulus is the elastic modulus per unit density or the mass density okay so in effect we if we closely observe we can see that the the major aim of the fibers is to increase the strength tensile strength or here we can say the stress carrying cap capacity of the material okay so this strength is obtained by having applied load transmitted from matrix to the fibers that means whenever a fiber is there here what the matrix do is that the matrix load is transferred to the fiber okay so this fibers will carry the load so one of the classic example of the fiber reinforced composites are the fiber glass and the wood okay so next important thing which we need to focus is the fiber phase the fiber phase are basically divided or classified as shown in the figure it is first divided into basically divided into three that is viscous fiber and fine wires okay. so here like fine wires or wires also we will call so here we can see that uh, the thing like the viscous the diameter is based on based on micrometer whereas the fibers is in the range of micrometer to millimeter so here the wire lies on the above diameter is the range of millimeter more specifically speaking we can say that we can we we use the length to diameter ratio okay so the length to diameter ratio for the viscous is very very small whereas for the length to diameter ratio for the wires are very very small okay so the fibers will come in between these two so here like due to very huge price and expense we will uh, limit the use of viscous and uh, due to some property issues so we will use this fine wires also in a limited use okay or else we will use the very fine wires, somewhat diameter greater than that so the fiber will come in between we can see the some of the examples of fine wires like steel molded and tungsten wires okay which is used as the radial steel reinforcement in automobile tires filaments and all. okay so which the our fiber part will comes in between these two so here this is the basic difference between these particles so the metric phase okay is of a fibers composite maybe can be from anywhere like it can be from metal it can be from polymer or it can be from ceramic so the influence of the fiber length so whatever properties which we are uh, evaluate the mechanical characteristics which uh, we are studying so all depends upon two factors first of all the properties of this particular fiber and the applied load 
to hold composite and it is which is transmitted to this fiber so these are the two important problems so this is all all the explanation is based on this figure so here this figure the white portion represent the matrix and this uh, uh, rose color portion indicates the fiber part so the load transmitted depends on the magnitude of the interfacial bond between this matrix and the fiber so when a force or a stress is applied the fiber matrix bond which is shown here like will is subjected to yielding and a deformation pattern will be obtained so for this uh, for an effective composite to uh, be prepared like the the fiber should have some critical fiber length okay the fiber length how we will calculate so it's uh, based on a certain calculations which uh, is developed and i am not going into some derivations and all but just uh, introducing with the equation to you. Okay. the critical length of any fiber depends on some factors like the fiber diameter that is d the ultimate strength which is coming to the matrix and which in turn transfer to these the so called fibers and the fiber matrix bond strength which is denoted by tau c okay. so the these three things it just depends on these uh, three factors and this is the equation which is uh, developed so this figure represents some the stress at various positions when the uh, when the length of the fibers are different so if we imagine a fiber which is having a similar uh, or the same critical length you can see the stress uh, this it will reach the applied uh, this the maximum load and the uh, ability will be the up to this and if the critical length if the length is greater than critical length the stress pattern will be like this and here if the length is lesser than critical length we can see that the achieved stress is far lesser than the ultimate uh, strength so now next see the influence of this fiber orientation within a matrix so the first one is like the continuous and aligned orientation of the fibers so here this will be able to hand longitudinal and transverse direction loads effective second one is uh, the discontinuous one because we don't we cannot say the continuity we cannot ensure the continuity and length of the fibers can be lesser than that of critical length and what most uh, happen is that it is uh, even though it is aligned it is discontinuous okay so and the third type is like the randomly oriented you can see that somewhere here and there it is randomly dispersed without any proper alignment okay. now let us see the continuous and aligned fibers in detail okay this is the continuous and aligned uh, fiber so if this is uh, the larger uh, so it is well aligned along the uh, longitudinal direction so here we can see that the properties of the composites okay it is highly anisotropic that means if we change the direction the properties of that particular composite will entirely uh, different because in the longitudinal direction it is different the transaction it will be some other property okay we cannot ensure that in the all the same direction or in different directions the properties will be same so in a continuous and aligned fiber composites the properties will be different in different directions okay the mechanical response of this particular type of composites depends on several factors like stress strain behavior of fibers metric phases the phase volume fractions the direction in which the stresses of the load is applied now let us see the tensile 
stress strain behavior of this continuous and iron fiber composites in a longitudinal road so this will be the curve which we are obtaining so here x axis represent the strain or uh, y axis represent the stresses so this is for fiber matrix and the composite matrix so coming back we can see that the applied load in the longitudinal direction the applied load will be along the direction of this arrangement okay as we have seen here along the direction longitudinal direction this uh, treatment like uh, we consider the fiber to be totally brittle okay and the matrix phase to be reasonably ductile so that uh, it can carry much uh, load and all without failure okay. the fracture tough uh, strength in, in the tension the fiber and matrix is not replaced it must have and it must have corresponding fracture strain is epsilon star f and epsilon star f so here we have seen that the strain uh, epsilon star f is much lesser than epsilon star f so the, it occurs in several stages and the first stage we will go and discuss the initial stage the one region both uh, fibers and matrix deform elastic okay normally this portion of the curve will be somewhat linear so here it will be uh, linear and typically for the composites of this type the matrix yield and perform plastically while the fibers continues to stretch okay. so this is the stage one which we are found to see so this is the fiber and this is the matrix over here what happens is that for composites it's just linear okay just like this so both the fibers and matrix deform elastic that's what you can see here okay so what happens at the stage 2 stage 2 is more interesting here if we closely observe you can see that this is uh, the fiber is more brittle whereas the this one the matrix is more ductile so the what happens is that here also uh, this elastic nature elastic deformation will increase but with a different slope in stage 2 okay so here what will happen is that it will handle some load but what will happen is that it will it will the fiber will fail but at that same strain itself the failure for the fibers will occur but here comes the play that means all the fiber will not break at a particular time so that along with the ductility and along with the brittleness it will carry much load and this is the uh, reason for high tensile strength behavior of the of our composites or in other terms we can say the composite failure is not a cat catastrophic that means all of a sudden it will not fail so even after the failure fiber failure the matrix will carry some load and continuously it will or it will plastically deform matrix so all of a sudden it will not happen but if you use just the fiber alone it will fail all of a sudden immediately but if you use the matrix it will not fail all of a sudden but it cannot carry higher stress but if you use a composite what we will use is that we will carry some more stress as well as a, it will not fail that much easily so this is the uh, explanation for this longitudinal so now let us uh, see the elastic behavior the longitudinal loading and how to find the modulus of elasticity of a continuous and array by the composite okay so here like uh, here the assumption is taking taking is that it is an isostrain state the isostrain state is that the fiber matrix interfacial bond is very very strong 
and the deformation happens so that uh, deformation of this both matrix as well as the fibers is same that means epsilon c of the composite string the composite will be same as that of matrix which is same as that of the fiber and coming back you can say that the load which is applied on the composite is equally shared by the matrix phase and the fiber phase so if c we can say it is f1 plus f f so which is you know stress into area sigma c is in the sigma m m sigma f into s dividing it by ac throughout we will get this equation and am by ac is and af by ac and the area fraction equal to the volume fraction so we can say uh, this equal to this volume fraction we can we can replace it by vm and f so replaced by vm and f so applying the iso strain condition that is sigma c equal to sigma m is equal to sigma f so we will get this particular equation and from that we will get the modulus of elasticity of the continuous and then aligned fiber composites the vm plus vf is taken as one next is the transverse loading that means the load which is applied 90 degree to this fiber alignment so the assumptions which we are taking here is that the iso stress state because stress throughout the composite and matrix and the fiber since it is of transverse loading it will be same so the strain deformation of the entire composite will be taken in the terms of volume fraction as we discussed in case of stresses earlier this is a strain the stress is replaced from the longitudinal load to here to strain so here on substituting the value of epsilon here we will get uh, this equation and ecl is the modulus of elasticity and dividing throughout by the stress or sigma we will get this equation and ecl will be calculated in this fashion now let us see the discontinuous and aligned fiber composites okay we have seen the discontinuous because this is the continuous one so this is the discontinuous one which is aligned as well as in a random way so now let us see one of the example is the carbon fiber which is used nowadays earlier it was not much used but nowadays the trend is increasing uh, so with various certain applications but whatever we are using the discontinuous uh, fibers okay it will produce uh, like strengths only up to 90 to 50 percentage of their counterparts okay that means count continuous aligned fibers so if we rule if you take the rule of mixture some small changes there if we need to multiply the k k is the uh, fiber efficiency parameters so in in case of discontinuous and randomly oriented uh, we can say that the multi-directional stress assessors the multi-dimensional properties is somewhat uh, same in all directions so the components which uh, subjected to uh, multi-direction loadings and all or where we we should not need to observe the strict anisotropy. property so in such areas we can use this discontinuous and random loadings so thank you for the uh, attention in the next video we will come up with a new topic Thank you.